I'm back and I'm going to talk about a topic that you guys have requested more than any other topic and that's horizontal scrolling websites. That's a website that scrolls side to side instead of up and down. And uh, there's a good way to do it and there's a bad way to do it. And because of that, I figured this would make a great design challenge for this month. So the March design challenge is going to be all about uh, horizontal scrolling websites. I want you guys to build a horizontal page. It doesn't have to be a full-blown website, uh, but at least one page. And follow the link below to uh, get more details on the design challenge and to submit. And the winner will win, just like last month, the Icon Mega Pack Vector Edition from Muse Resources. So that's pretty exciting. And you can see in my demo here, I've used some icons from that Icon Mega Pack. So get excited because I'm going to show you how to do this. It's not too hard, but if you're brand new to parallax scrolling, you may want to watch some of my other tutorials first, get an understanding of key position, uh, etc. Because in the good example, we are going to be using the scroll motion, and I want you guys to be familiar with that first. In the bad example, uh, this is just a really, really wide web page, and you can see here that I can scroll left to right, but since everyone's screen is a different height, we've got to design to accommodate the larger screen. So I've got this extra space below, and I'm able to scroll into it, which sucks. You don't want people scrolling into the blank space down below. Uh, you only want them to stay sort of on rails and go across. So if we go back to my good example here, um, as I scroll, we're staying on rails. We are not able to scroll down. I'm actually scrolling down to go to the right. And another reason for that is that most mice uh, and input devices allow you to scroll up and down real easily, but don't necessarily allow you to scroll side to side really easily. So the way this is designed, someone could scroll up and down on their mouse and the page will go side to side. Unlike this example where you actually have to scroll sideways, uh, some of you may have noticed the vertical scroll bar or horizontal scroll bar rather at the bottom and most mice just don't have that built into the mouse. So the good example has that advantage going for it as well. So let's look at the difference in Muse. I'm going to close this up, open up Adobe Muse, and let's start with the bad example. The bad example is a web page that's just really, really wide and has stuff horizontally placed across it. This is the more literal example of a horizontal website, but it's the old school, lame way to do it. I do not recommend building a horizontal web page this way. So let's look at the good example. Looks kind of weird, right? I've got these sections stacked vertically, even though it's a horizontal scrolling website. So I'm going to show you why that is. And uh, I recommend that if you are going to design, that you design in sections. See so, you how know, I've got this green section here, this blue section here, and this darker blue section here. You don't need to use colorful backgrounds. You just need to give yourself some guides here. And uh, the reason for that is you do need your page to be excessively tall so it accommodates bigger screens like a 27-inch iMac. But you also need each section to kind of click together with each other section as you scroll sideways. So it'll start to make more sense in a minute. But uh, essentially what I've done here is I've created a green box, just a regular old box. And the size of that box is 1,400 pixels tall. Actually, 1,440 pixels tall because that's how tall an IMAX screen is. And 1,440 pixels wide. Uh, if you want to make your life easy, make it a perfect, squ uh, perfect square. No matter how tall it is, make it equally wide. And at 1,440 pixels tall and 1,440 pixels wide, uh, you're pretty much set. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fill just about any screen you end up uh, being viewed on. The next thing that you'll want to know is that we are using scroll effects. We're using the scroll motion to make every element scroll left and right. So once you get your sections designed like this, uh, which you can do without touching scroll motion, you can just design visually. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to grab everything. I'm just going to highlight everything. And you want to go over to your scroll effects panel. And on your scroll effects panel, you want to turn on motion and then you want the first box for vertical motion to be set to zero because there's going to be zero uh, up and down motion uh, of these objects. They're only going to move left and right in my example. And then the next box is the horizontal motion. It's just going to move at one times. Nothing's going to be accelerated. Nothing's going to be slow motion. Everything's just going to move at a normal pace from left to right. So uh, just go ahead and type in one times there. And I said from left to right, but the truth is you'll probably want to switch this little arrow to go from right to left because uh, that's the way we read, at least in my native language, that is the way we read. 
So I've got this set on 0, 1, and going left to right, or right to left rather, with the arrow pointing to the left. And then the next one, the next one's a little more complicated. Um, for the time being, set that on 0. Okay, that actually just created some problems, but I'm going to show you what those problems are and how to fix those problems. Uh, the next thing is down below, make it match the top. 0 followed by 1, and make sure that your arrow is going the same direction. So now we've told all these objects that we want them to scroll horizontally. What we haven't told them is that we need them to happen horizontally uh, in sort of an order. There has to be sort of a, a method to the vertical nature of this, uh, this design so that everything flows in horizontally and kind of clicks together, as I mentioned before. So the reason that things click together is because of the key position. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to scroll up. Uh, let me zoom out to 50%. Uh, with an object selected up here in my first section, you can see that the little T handle that comes out uh, goes to the top of its respective section. Now there are two things that the key position determines, and this is where things get really crazy. Um, and if you're working in sections, it makes things a lot easier versus uh, just having things scattered all over the place. So the first section with a key position of zero uh, is exactly what you need. The key position needs to be at the top of the section and then the key position for each of the objects needs to be at the top of the section. So putting in zero for every one of those uh, was exactly what we needed for this first section. Uh, but here's the thing. If I need this pie chart to be lower than the other objects, when I scoot it down, um, I'm scooting it down with the key position. Now, the two things that the key position determines is how early or how late this object will show up as I'm scrolling through the page, and how far from the top of the page this object will be. Now, how can it do both of those things at once? The answer is actually pretty simple. The key position relative to the page, relative to the entire page, determines how early or how late something will show up. So the further down you pull the key position, the later the object will show up. The higher up you pull the key position, the earlier the object will show up. Now, what does that have to do with the position of the object relative to the top of the browser? That's the gap between the key position and the object. Now, if that sounds confusing, it's because it is confusing. It's extremely confusing. So, what you want to do if you're working in sections like this is just make sure that the key position stays at the top of the section and everything will work out visually the way you expect it to. This will be this far from the top because that is the gap created by the, by the key position handle. And this will appear at the same relative time as these because they all have the same key position pointing to the same line across the top. That's what that section helps me keep track of is consistency between these objects. If objects all have the same key position, then objects will all keep the same spatial relationship to one another, side to side. So it's pretty simple with the first section because the top of the page is where you want to keep that handle for the key position. It's a little bit different with the second and third and fourth sections. Now see how this says some sort of text? This is a text box that is positioned a little bit lower than the top of the blue, but the key position handle is not attached to the top of the blue. So if I go and preview this in the browser and we scroll through it, everything looks good, except, uh-oh, where's my blue? And where's the rest of the blue? Where Where's anything, really? It looks like the green section is good, but the other sections have disappeared. And the reason for that is that the key positions for these two objects need to be at the top of the section because the top of this section defines the rest of the objects in the section uh, and the key position has to follow suit. So, to put it simply, if you know how far down this section starts, which you can find out from the transform panel, uh, looks like the Y position is 1440. If the Y position of the top of this section is 1440, then the key position also has to be 1440 for every object in the section. So I'm going to highlight both of these. I'm going to go back to scroll effects and I'm going to set my key position to 1440. There we go. Then I'm going to go to the next section and I'm going to click on the background block, the big 
dark blue box, and I'm going to look at where that starts. And it looks like the Y position of that is 2880. So I got to remember that for a moment, highlight all this stuff, and set its key position to 2880. So I'm basically saying all of the things in this section I would like to be positioned relative to the top of this box and to be positioned relative to one another in exactly the same way that I see them here in design view. So that's what that accomplishes, having that keyframe in the same position. Now if you change your mind about the way something is positioned, if I decide to scoot this down, don't forget, you didn't just scoot it down. You scooted it down and you moved the key position. And by moving the key position, you also said, I want this to show up later. Uh, later being further to the right because we're scrolling uh, from left to right. So I need to remember to scoot this back up to the top. Anytime you move an object, make sure that its uh, key position stays with the top of the section and matches all the rest of the objects. So now I'm going to go back to preview this in the browser. Everything should be cool now. Yep, looks good. Everything's cool. So you guys are probably noticing that the space between the top of the browser and the text box here and the, sh the space between the top of the browser and the icons here is the same space created by this T handle gap for the key position. So that is where the positioning is coming from. And uh, just, just to show you guys, by scooting the key position of this down to the top, I'm basically saying I want this to be at the very top of the browser. But remember the side effect, by moving the key position down, I'm also saying that I want to see this object later, meaning further to the right. So if I preview this in the browser again, see it scooted up to the top, just like we expected, but that side effect, it also scooted to the right. It scooted to the right by the same number of pixels that I pulled it down by. So if I pulled it down by, let's see, about 200 pixels, I also made it scoot to the right by about 200 pixels. So with, with all that, I know that's all pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I would like to show you how easy it is to now change the speed of things and make it more interesting. Uh, I can click on this guy down here and without touching the key position, I'm just going to change the speed that it moves and I'm going to change it both here at the top and here at the bottom and only the horizontal one. We're not changing the vertical scroll speed here. So I'm just going to change the horizontal scroll speed of this guy to let's say 0.5 and you got to change it in both places if you want it to keep going the same speed. Uh, this guy here, I'll leave it at 1, and then this guy here, I will double it to 2 times. And that's just for the horizontal again. And when I preview it in the browser, as I come through, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, uh, see, when an object goes at half speed, it shows up sooner, uh, but it all comes together when you reach the point at which uh, things are centered. When you get to the point that things are centered, they all line up with one another, and then as I keep going, they all kind of fly out together. So you can really do a lot of cool stuff with this. Um, you can also make a big mess. You can also have a huge headache. Uh, if you're not into putting backgrounds in here, uh, you can create these big boxes. Again, 1440 by 1440 uh, yields the best result and make sure they're centered up on the page. Uh, you can see here my page, uh, this is centered up on that page. And uh, I also got rid of the gap at the top of the page. I have my page top dragged all the way up so I don't have any extra gap. Uh, but by creating these blocks for myself, I'm sort of creating a, a template that I can stay within. And by creating that template, uh, I'm taking a lot of the guesswork out. But if you do want to get rid of these and you want to make sure that you're not uh, slipping around on accident with your, uh, with your little T-handles here, what you can do is grab the ruler at the top and drag in a guide. And you could drag those guides in where your boxes meet one another. And by doing that, I could now delete the boxes. And when I delete the boxes, I still have my guides. So I can still make sure that all my T-handles line up with those guides. So the boxes are optional. They're really just a design element that I decided to use in my example. But if you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe. I hope to see a lot of really cool submissions for the design challenge. And again, I'll put uh, an annotation in here so you guys have a link to submit your entries to the design challenge. And uh, hopefully you'll win that Icon Mega Pack. You guys can see that I have it installed over here. It's pretty sweet. A lot of good stuff in this Icon Mega Pack. So good luck with the competition. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe already. It is also a requirement to win the Design Mega Pack. So subscribe and let's see what you guys come up with. I'll be posting the winner on Facebook. And uh, with your permission, I will be posting your winning entry as well. So make it good. Hopefully the rest of the world will see it.
All right, guys. See you soon.